Anyway, hey guys, Andy here. Um, welcome you to my first, I guess, technically this is my first live stream on this channel, the Andy Sun Life and Video. So, in any event, um, just sitting here at McDonald's having some lovely iced coffee, no ice, so I can get some uh, extra coffee. I just got done having some lunch. I had a lot of food for lunch, so it's not good for the, the waistline or the or the turkey neck here. Um, but you know, it's fall, and uh, I really wanted some pumpkin pie and iced coffee, can I say. <laughs> but anyway, guys, um, I just got done doing a live video over at my other channel, edited by the Andy San. And over there, I talked about uh, the recent status of that channel, um, talking about, obviously, if you read the title in this video, how that channel got demonetized. And it was due to, I'll just give you guys a Cliff Notes version, so this isn't a whole 15 minute video about all that. Um, so, <clears throat> I got the email yesterday, and uh, they said that my channel was demonetized due to duplicate content. Now, there's several things that I think the uh, YouTube algorithm bots possibly a manual flagger I, I don't know you know who got it or what they got because YouTube hasn't gotten back to me on that um, but there's a couple suspects that I have on all that and that is um, could be my star bomb stuff um, for those who don't know I edited uh, some star bomb videos of their South by Southwest 2016 set um, they had like a whole live stream of it and everything and I got some uh, video of all that, and uh, I really didn't like the audio in the original stream, so um, for editing practice, I decided to uh, put it into Adobe Audition to work on uh, compression and limiting and EQ and all that kind of stuff to make it sound a lot better, and it did <laughs> sound a lot better, and it was, you know, at least the full set. The uh, the individual songs did okay, but the full set was one of my most uh, viewed videos of my channel of all time. And so obviously a lot of people liked it too. <laughs> um, but <clears throat> that could be a possible suspect. But that was you know claimed by the rifle copyright holders as they should have claimed it. So um, not faulting them there for that. I just did it for editing practice, you know. Um, Another possible suspect could be the Roger Swan Remastered series. So again, and this was actually before the whole Starbomb stuff happened, um, when I was first learning how to use Adobe Premiere, I wanted to practice on some stuff. And uh, one of the things I wanted to practice on was uh, just some videos. And uh, so it was also, you know, the anniversary of I believe at the time it was the anniversary of uh, Roger Swan's first arrival to Japan, if I remember right. And uh, <clears throat> I wanted to commemorate it because I'd seen uh, he had after he passed away in 2010, he had a, uh, a Facebook a memorial uh, group posted, and uh, somebody in there posted a while back about, man, it'd be cool to have uh, you know Roger's old. Uh, you know Tokyo Swan and Iwate Swan stuff on uh, on like a DVD or, or something like that and uh, you know <laughs> I thought it was kind of a cool idea so I floated the idea of maybe me like cleaning up the series because a lot of it was shot in like 240p so it was really low definition even by back then standards um, so I thought about doing that, and, uh, you know, I'd also kind of use it just as editing practice, because, you know, I wanted to cut some stuff on uh, Premiere, learn how the system works versus Vegas, which uh, Vegas I'd used for years and years and years, and, uh, you know, Premiere's obviously got more stuff with it. Um, I don't know how Vegas 14 and up is. Uh, I don't know what version they're on right now. Last version I used was 13, which I think I still have on my computer somewhere. Uh, but I haven't used it in fucking years. So, in any event. Um, so, 
I decided to use it just as editing practice and then it kind of became sort of uh, a tribute to him because uh, originally I wanted it on his channel and I tried getting in contact with people that might know his login info or whatever and you know I wanted to just send them the episodes so they could put it up because I didn't want to get in myself or have any involvement with that I just wanted to you know make the episodes and or remake them rather <laughs> and uh, you know put them up on his channel but they felt it was best to just kind of leave his channel as it was and just for me to upload them to my own channel so I got the okay from them so I decided to just do that and uh, eventually I unlisted them because I felt like especially since there were so many episodes it bogged down the rest of my channel so I just unlisted them put them in a playlist so people could still watch them um, and then later on made them public again I think um, but when I was doing this recent channel cleanup um, <clears throat> I decided to unlist like a lot of the videos that just weren't relevant to uh, the edited by the Andy San channel anymore and did all that stuff so uh, there's that and also you know the third suspect in this whole thing would be uh, just the personal life videos vlogs updates all that stuff the not edited tutorial content that I've put it out um, you know since I'm moving that stuff from that channel to this channel and a lot of it was also from my original channel so you know I can definitely see you know where some people would think that it's duplicate content and stuff but usually that stuff is like uh, content ID'd or whatever um, and you think they would contact like the original uploader about the whole thing <laughs> but uh, so it could be a simple misunderstanding because you know I'm moving videos around and you know changing the image of the channels so it could be something simple like that but anyway shit I said this will get, this is gonna be a condensed version but it's eight minutes instead of 15 so close enough so anyway getting into life updates and things like that and I've touched on some of these subjects in my September 2018 part due video um, but one of the things I wanted to do uh, was go back to Japan and it's something I've been obviously wanting to do for a while now <laughs> and you know I don't want to talk at length about all that stuff but uh, you know as of late I've been looking into different opportunities for coming back to Japan and the obvious one is going back to school out in Japan and um, you know I have two schools lined up right now I'm keeping in contact with and that is Lakeland University out in Tokyo and Temple University obviously the, uh, the Tokyo campus and uh, you know both of them have kind of their pros and cons you know with with Temple the upfront cost for um, moving out there because one of my main concerns is um, upfront living costs because just to give you guys some context, um, I'll be able to go to school there on the GI Bill. Um, I still have a couple years left on it, and I wanted to go out there, get my degree, and, you know, get, like, a working visa so I can still stay out there. And plus, you know, if I get my degree, then I'll actually be in Japan, can, like, find jobs out there, and, you know, be able to get the working visa a lot faster if I'm actually there, and applying for jobs in person versus you know going to school or coming back to the states or just straight up applying from the states um, again it's not impossible but it's just easier and plus you know I'll be able to do some creative stuff out there um, which we'll get into in a sec but uh, need some iced coffee here fuel the brains so uh, because I'm on the GI Bill um, once uh, that all kicks in and I get the uh, the monthly stipend and everything then I should be fine between that and uh, you know doing the freelance video editing and doing um, like part-time work 
whatever the case, um, I should be fine. Uh, but it's just the initial upfront costs of getting there is what I'm worried about currently. Um, you know, for me, uh, the biggest cost would be obviously the, the plane ticket, be <laughs> the biggest one. Um, you know, for somebody living in the Midwest in Ohio, um, the the typical um, ticket price would be around a thousand dollars. You know, d depending on how far in advance you book it and like what time of the year it is when you book it. You know, it could range from like fifteen hundred to maybe a thousand. I think the lowest I've ever seen it ever was like seven hundred dollars. I think it was seven seventy actually. Um, and that was booking it like six months in advance during the summer when it's kind of hot and sticky and not a whole lot of people are coming out to Japan during that time. Um, so, you know, I can get a pretty decent airfare doing it that way. Uh, but I still want to save up enough, uh, enough extra money just to make sure, you know, in case uh, plane tickets fluctuate and obviously the longer I wait you know the less time in between now and you know or less time between me booking my flight versus uh, you know getting on the flight so the more expensive it'll be the sooner that I order it or the less time in between Jesus I can words <laughs> but um, what else was I going to say so is that, that's the main expense. And also I want to save up uh, at least a month or two's worth of just living expenses, you know, in case something happens, you know, GI bills delayed in payment or uh, whatever the case may be. Um, and plus, you know, I obviously need the first month's worth of living expenses because GI bill's not going to kick in until a month from now or a month from when I apply or start school, Jesus. Get it right, Andy. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so it is going to be like a little month in between. And, you know, I wanted that second month just to be on the safe side in case something happens. You know, like emergency situation where I have to, like, come back to America or, you know, maybe, like, uh, some kind of unforeseen expense comes up or something like that. You know, it's always good to have a little bit of safety, safety money. But, you know, once the GI Bill kicks in, and in between I'll be doing, like, freelance work and other part-time stuff, teaching English, whatevs, um, then I'll be able to, uh, you know, I'll be fine by then. <clears throat> but as far as uh, why I want to go back is, uh, you know, I, I just felt like I was at my creative best when I was out in Japan, you know, there's just, just like so many things to see out there and it felt like there was just no shortage of, you know, festivals, events, uh, landmarks, just all kinds of different things, you know, it felt like there was just no shortage of all that and, uh, uh, you know, it just felt like even only being stationed out there for two years, you know, I only experienced just, just a small portion of all that, you know, and plus I just want to see different parts of it too, beyond, you know, Kanagawa and Tokyo and Shizuoka and stuff like that. You know, I want to actually like get to more traditional parts, you know, Kyoto, Osaka, even going, you know, to southern Japan, which I really loved uh, when we visited uh, Hiroshima, stuff like that. And uh, I want to get some video out there too, because I ended up losing all my friggin' video footage that I recorded back when we visited there uh, for a port visit because my friggin' GoPro lost all my footage uh, which sucked because I got some stuff in South Korea and then I got some stuff in Hiroshima in that area eh, it is what it is but uh yeah you just gotta make sure to data dump all your stuff before you preview it just a little, little pro tip there <laughs> Maybe. But in any event, definitely want to revisit it, see Fukuoka, you know, because it looks just gorgeous out there. 
um, and obviously meet up with some YouTubers, network. That's another big reason why I'm going out, out there is to network with people. Um, all of my freelance clients are out there, pretty much. So it would make sense to, you know, go where they're at because I'll be able to help them more than just, you know, doing my editing work, you know, thousands of miles away. You know, I'll be able to actually, like, be a cameraman, show them how to do some B-roll shots and, you know, if anything, just be an extra pair of hands <laughs> to help them with their stuff. Or and then and an extra set of eyes to, like, see, is this shot okay? You know, is it okay to do this? Or, you know, what do you think, Andy? So, um, yeah. And, you know, like I said, obviously network, you know, be of more use to my current freelance clients as well as get more freelance clients, increase portfolio, <laughs> increase portfolio and uh, things like that. And obviously get my degree, of course, you know, school's top priority because um, I know, you know, I haven't had such a good uh, track record in the past of uh, college things like that and uh, you know out in Kalamazoo I think well <laughs> I gotta worry about that lens flare there but obviously you know out in Kalamazoo I think that it just wasn't the right environment for me and you know looking back I really should have left a lot sooner I really should have just got out of there a lot sooner um, but I, w I wanted to make it work and ended up staying there way longer than I should have. Uh, much to my own detriment, looking back at it. But, uh, yeah, it just, it just wasn't the right environment. And I wanted to make it work. I didn't want to just stay there for a little bit and then, like, leave when it got hard. Um, but it just, it just didn't work out. So, it is what it is, you know. So that's one of the reasons why I came back here to Ohio was to regroup and everything. And, uh, you know, I decided to take a break from college for a year just to kind of see, like, where my head's at and see what I want to really do. Because I felt like I was just kind of hopping from one college to the next without any real plan or anything like that. And, you know, I didn't have a support system at the time up in... Uh, up in Kalamazoo so I didn't really have a, a huge network of people I could talk to when I was feeling down or if I needed help with something I mean I had work friends of course but uh, you know it's not the same uh, and also just you know options of things to do I think is one of the things that I sorely need especially in this stage of my life because you know, one of the things, you know, being in the in the Navy, you get to visit all these really big, fancy cities and everything, and you kind of get spoiled, you know, when you go back to either like a mid-sized city or, you know, a small town in Ohio especially, shit. <laughs> At least for my own personality. Um, it might be different for other people, you know, and I was talking with my mom about this actually. You know, it just, because when I would come home on leave, you know, for me, it was just kind of a break from all the rush, rush craziness of uh, military life and life in a bigger city and stuff like that. So I actually enjoyed being here for two weeks, not doing anything. <laughs> um, but to, you know, come here on leave versus, you know, living here is just way different. And I feel like, you know, ultimately this environment isn't conducive to what I want to do and I want to get out there and explore mo more and I feel like just staying in this area I feel like I'm just stagnating and I'm not really going anywhere really um, so you know I thought about moving to LA or New York or something like that because it's more focused on the uh, the creative industry film industry all that kind of stuff uh, but Okay. All right. There's a huge ass bug up there. We gotta shut this thing because I'm about done with this live stream anyway. So, it's cool. Okay. Cool. 
Yeah, there's like a big ass friggin, I don't know if it's a horse fly or what. It was up there. In any event, uh, this is my train of thought here. So, yeah, just, you know, ultimately the reason I want to go back to Japan is because I want to experience more creative growth, more personal growth. Because I felt like I was really coming into my own as a person out there. Um, I just felt like I was being held back a lot being in the military out there because you could only really do so much. Um, you know, I just, without those restrictions, you know, I feel like I could do a lot more out there and not have to worry about, you know, people yelling at me or getting punished or something like that. Um, so, um, and plus, you know, I want to network more, I want to increase my network. I want to work more with my current clients and uh, get more clients and then uh, graduate with a degree so I can uh, obtain a work visa. And who knows, maybe start a relationship, I don't know. <laughs> Just putting that out there. Um, but we'll see what happens as far as that goes. Um, not, uh, not hold my breath on that one, but we'll see. You never know. <laughs> They do like the white meat out there, just saying. But in any event, guys, uh, I gotta get on. Cause this car is starting to heat up since I closed the friggin' window, cause I didn't want that bug in here. And I think I've kind of rambled and raved long enough about uh, things that are going on in my life. Uh, the, the demonetization situation, uh, going back to Japan, saving up for that. Um, I was thinking about doing a, uh, like a, Ko-Fi or Kofi or something like that sort of thing <clears throat> to help me save up for if anything just a plane ticket and then I can save up for the rest of the stuff or just whatever um, think about starting one of them up you know I'm not expecting anything from it but who knows <laughs> every little bit helps that's all I gotta say that's something else I'm looking into but in any event uh, that's that's what I've been up to and uh Definitely look forward to, to more videos, um, both old and new. It's not all going to be old videos, but uh, old videos are going to be daily, um, every day, obviously daily, though. <laughs> at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I'm going to have one video from the archives, and then, you know, mm. as updates and stuff allow and all this kind of stuff, uh, we'll do more. And, you know, I want to do some more personal type videos. Give me a chance to kind of flex my creativity here and there. And uh, stuff like that. So, with that said, this is the Andy Sign. Sign for now. As always, we'll see you next time. Catch you later, guys. Bye.